Live from Boston, Massachusetts, it's theCUBE, covering AWS reinforce 2019. Brought to you by Amazon Web Services and its ecosystem partners. Hey, welcome back everyone. It's theCUBE's live coverage here in Boston, Massachusetts for AWS reinforce Amazon Web Services inaugural event around cloud security. I'm John Furrier, Dave Vellante. Two days of coverage, we're winding down day two. We're excited to have you here in theCUBE. Special guest, part of the big, one of the big announcements, well I think it's big, nerdy announcement, is the Automated Reasoning. Byron Cook, director of the Automated Reasoning Group within AWS. Again, this is part of the team that's going to help figure out security, use automation to augment humans. Great to have you on. Big part of the show here. Yeah, thank, the yeah, yeah, thanks very much for having me. All right, so explain the Automated Reasoning Group uh, Werner Vogel had a great uh, blog post on all things distributed. Yeah. Applies formal verification techniques yep. in an innovative way to cloud security and compliance for our customers, for our own AWS developers. Yeah. What does that mean? What does uh, he mean by that? Well, let me, let <laughs> a let bunch me, of math? Yeah, let me try, I'll, I'll give you one explanation <laughs> and if I puzzle you, I'll try to try okay. explain it a different way. So, um, do you know the Pythagorean theorem? Yep. Oh, sure. Yeah, so, so that, the Pythagorean theorem is about all triangles that was proved in approximately 300 BC. It's, uh, the proof is a finite uh, description in logic as to why it's true and it holds for all possible triangles. So we're basically using the same approaches to prove properties of policies, of networks, of programs, so for example crypto, virtualization, uh, the storage, et cetera. So we write software, this finds proofs in mathematics and this, the Proofs are the same as what Euclid found for the Pythagorean theorem. So to apply into solve problems that become these mundane tasks of checking config files, making sure things are, is that the where it's it kind of goes more It's a little bit more, more than that, so I'll give you an example. Yeah. So, um, so S2N, which is the TLS implementation used, for, for example, in S3, but the, the large majority of AWS, so that has approximately 12,000 state holding elements, so that with the, if you include the stack and the heap usage, so the number of possible states it could reach is two to the 12,000. And if you wanted to show that the TLS handshake implementation is correct, or the HMAC implementation is correct, or the deterministic random bit generator implementation is correct, which is what we do, using conventional methods, like trying to run tests on it. Yeah. So you would need, if you had like a million Haswell microprocessors, uh, you would need many more lifetimes than the sun is going to emit light at $3.4 billion a year to test, to exhaustively test that system. So what we do is we, rather than just running a bunch of inputs on the code, we, we represent that as, the, as a mathematical system and then we use proof techniques uh, auto automatically search for a proof, and in, uh, with our tools, we in about 10 minutes are able to prove all of those properties of S2N. So 10 then minutes. we, yeah, in 10 minutes. And then we apply that to pieces of S3, pieces of EC2 virtualization infrastructure. Uh, and then uh, uh, what we've done is we've realized that customers had a lot of questions about their networks and their policies. So for example, they have a complicated network worldwide, different, different availability zones, different regions, uh, and they want to ask, hey, does there exist a way for this machine to connect to this other machine? Uh, or, 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 you know, to do all, uh, does all SSH uh, traffic coming in that eventually gets to my uh, web server go through a bastion host, which is a best, best practice? And then we can answer that question again using logic. So we take the representation, the semantics of EC2 networking, the policy, the um, network from the customer, and then the question we're asking expressed in logic, and we throw a big theorem, theorem, uh, call a theorem prover, get the answer back, and then same for policies. So you're analyzing policies. Policies, yeah. networks, programs. And networks, but connections. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And it, to the tooling is, is Zelkova? And so yeah, so so basically we we, we come, we come with right? a tech we come with an approach, and then we have many tools that implement the approach on different uh, different problems. So That's how you apply it. So okay. Zelkova, all underneath, it's all uses of a kind of tool called SMT and SAT. So there's a, a SAT solver. Uh, proves theorems about formulae and propositional logic, and SMT is SAT modular theories. Those tools can uh, prove properties of uh, problems expressed in first order logic. And so what we do is we take the, for example, if you have a question about your policies, answering uh, 
answering semantic level questions about policies is actually a piece-based problem, so that's harder than MP-complete. We express the question in logic and then call the solver and get their answer back and marshal it back, and that's what Zilkova does. So that's calling a tool called CVC4, uh, which, is a, which is an open source uh, prover, and we, in Zilkova we take the policy, uh, the question, encode it to logic, call the solver, and, and marshal the answer back. What's, and, the, what's the root of this? I mean, um, presumably, there's some you know, academic research that was done, mm -hmm. that you guys are applying it yeah. you know, for your specific use case, but can you yeah. share yeah. with us kind of the, the origination of this? So the first uh, MP complete problem was discovered by a cook, and not, not me, the, another <laughs> cook, uh, <laughs> in, in, this, uh, in the early 70s. <laughs> uh, and so he, he proved that the propositional satisfiability problem is uh, MP complete. And, uh, uh, meanwhile, uh, there's been a lot of research from the 60s, so uh, Davis and Putnam, for example, I think a paper from uh, mid-60s where they were, were trying to answer the question of can we um, uh, efficiently solve this MP-complete problem, propositional satisfiability. Uh, and that research has continued. There have been a bunch of breakthroughs, and so now we're really starting to see very, right from, there was a big breakthrough in 2001, uh, and, then some, and then some further breakthroughs in the 2005, 2008 range. So what we're seeing is that the solvers are getting better and better. So there's an international competition of, let's say, usually about 30 solvers. And uh, there's a study recently where they took all of the winners from this competition each year, 2002 to 2011, and compared them on the same benchmarks and hardware. And uh, the 2002 solver was able to solve a quarter of the benchmarks, and the 2011 solved practically all of them. And then the, um, the, the 2019 solvers are even better. And so nowadays they can take problems in logic that have many tens of millions of variables and solve them very efficiently. So we're, we're really using the power of those underlying solvers and marshalling the questions to those, to those solvers. You're also. codifying, thinking math, and yep. that's the, the math yep. power is. Yep. You gave a talk in one of the sessions around provable security. Yeah. Kind of the title, yeah. Um, actually, proves provable. Yeah. What's what is that? What does that entail? Can you just explain that concept and uh, sure and the and the talk uh, sure. thesis? So uh, uh, so mathematical logic, you know, is two thousand years old, right? So and it, and it has refined. So Boole, for example, made uh, logic less of a philosophical thing and more of a mathematical thing, uh, and. And then automated reasoning was sort of developed in the 60s where you take algorithms and apply algorithms to find proofs in mathematical logic. And then provable security is the application of automated reasoning to questions in security and compliance. So we, uh, you want to prove uh, absence of memory corruption errors in C code, you want to prove termination of event handling routines that are supposed to handle security events. All of those questions are properties of your program and you can use these tools to automatically or, uh, or, or find proofs and then check the proofs that have been found manually uh, and, th and that's, what, that's where provable security fits in. What was the makeup on the attendee list? Were people grokking this? Were people excited? Was it all a bunch of math geeks? Because you have a cross section <laughs> of great security people here and they're deep dive conversations. It's not like yeah. reInvent this show. This is really deep security. What was some of the um, feedback and makeup of the attendees of so these I'm talks? So I'm going to give you two answers because I actually gave two talks. <laughs> and, the, and the answers are a little bit different because of the subject of the talk. So there was one on provable security which was a basically the foundation of logic and how we, how Tiris and Zokova and our program verify, because we also proved correctness of crypto and so on, so those tools. And so that was largely a, uh, 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 f folks who had heard about it and we're, we're wanting to know more, and, we're, or, and we're, we're wanting to know how we're using it and, and, and trying to learn. There was a second talk which was about the application of it to compliance. So that was with um, Tom McAndrew, who's the CEO of Coalfire, one of the third party uh, auditors yeah. that, that, that AWS uses and a lot of customers use, and also Chad Wolf, who's vice president of uh, security focused on, on compliance. Mm -hmm. And so the three of us spoke about how we're using it internally within AWS to automate uh, certification, compliance certification. Uh, and so that crowd was a really interesting mixture of uh, people interested in the automated reasoning and people interested in compliance, which are two communities you wouldn't think normally hang together, yeah. but that, that it's sort of like chocolate and peanut butter. It turns out yeah. to be a really great application. And they need to work together too because yeah. this is where all the action is. Yeah. Um, they don't get stuck in the compliance and auditing, but yeah. full engineering teams are merging with kind yeah. of old school 
compliance yeah. nerds. So there's a really interesting um, uh, sort of uh, dynamic to proof that has a, like the perfect use case in compliance. So the, the problem of like proving termination of programs is undecidable. Uh, proving uh, problems and pr uh, propositional logic is, is MP complete. It's all, it sounds very hard, difficult and you use heuristics to solve those problems. But the thing is that once you've found a proof, replaying the proof is linear in size of the proof. And so actually you can do it extremely efficiently. And that has application in compliance. So one could imagine that you have, for example, PCI, HIPAA, yeah, yeah. FedRAMP, you have certain controls yeah. that you want to prove that the property, like for example, within AWS we have a control that all data at rest must be encrypted. So we are using program verification tools to show that of the, of the code base. But now once we've run that tool, that constructs a proof like Euclid found in the Pythagorean theorem, that you can package up in a file, hand to an auditor, and then a very simple, easy to understand, yeah. third party open source tool can replay that proof, and so that becomes audit evidence. It's a scale, yeah. a total example of scale. Yeah, so the, that's, I would say, the engineering problem you're solving is security at scale. Yeah. Uh, the business problem you're solving is yeah, just trust. your customers yeah. are struggling yeah. with yeah. just implementing There just aren't security. enough security professionals to hire, right? So the old, day, as the talk explains, it's, they're all on YouTube, so people watching this show can, can go uh, check it out. But, uh, and by the way, I should, I should make a plug for, if you Google, AWS provable security, there's a web page uh, on AWS that has papers and videos and lots of information, so, so you might want to check that out. Yeah. Um, uh, I can't remember what I was answering now, so and I it's lost But it's track. got links to the academic the papers as well, yeah, right? Yeah. Oh yes, so yes, yeah. that was the point that um, Tom McAndrew was pointing out, is in the old days you would do an audit, you would come in, there'd be a couple Linux boxes, there'd be a Windows box, you check a few things, there'd be a little network, great. But now you have, you, machines across the world, uh, d d extremely c complex networks, interaction between policies, networks, crypto, et cetera, and so there's, there's no way a human or even a team of humans could come in and have any reasonable like, chance of actually deeply understanding yeah. the system, so they just sort of check some stuff. And then I, they call it success, and these tools really allow you to actually understand the entire system. Well, Byron, you guys are doing some cutting edge work, folks watching and want to know how math translates into the real world when all you high school kids out there, parents, this is an example <laughs> of the stuff you learn in school actually right. can be played. Right. So great work, I think, this is, I think this is cutting edge. I think math and the confluence of math intersects with groups. The compliance example, audit example, shows that worlds are going to come together with yeah. math. Yeah. I think this is a big mega trend. It's going to not eliminate the human element, yeah. it's going to augment that, so great stuff. Thanks. Final question, just randomly while you're yeah. here since uh, you're a math guru, yeah. uh, we're always interested, we're always covering uh, our favorite topic of blockchain. Uh -huh. um, we believe that a security conference is going to soon have a blockchain component because, because of the mutability of it, there's a lot of math yeah. behind it. So as that starts to mature, certainly Facebook entering in with their own currency, a whole nother mm -hmm. conversation, which we don't want to have here, is bringing a lot of attention. So mm -hmm. we see the intersection of security being a supply chain problem in the yeah. future. Your thoughts on that, just generally. So, um, so the problem of proving programs is undecidable, and that means that you can't build a general solution. What you're going to have to do is look for niche areas, like device drivers, networks, policies, API usage on crypto, et cetera, and then make the tools work for that area, and you will have to be comfortable with the idea that occasionally the tools aren't going to be able to find an answer. And so the, uh, the Amazon culture of being customer obsessed and working as closely as possible with the customer has been really helpful to uh, my community of, of, of uh, logic, uh, formal methods practitioners because they were really forced to work with the customer and understand the problem. So what I've been doing is uh, listening to the customer uh, and finding out what the problems, what the concerns they are and then focusing my attention on that. And I haven't yet heard of uh, of customers asking for mathematical proof on cryptocurrency, uh, blockchain, uh, sorts of stuff. But I'm, I, I, I await <laughs> further instructions. You're intrigued. Yeah, I'm not <laughs> sure. Uh, so I, I always like mathematics. But where we have been hearing um, customers ask for help is, for example, uh, we're working on uh, free RTOS. Uh, so IOT applications, understanding the networks that are connecting up uh, IOT 
uh, to the cloud, understanding the correctness of machine learning. So why, why, so I use, I've done some machine learning, I've constructed a model, how do I know what it does and is it compliant? Does it respect HIPAA, FedRAMP, PCI, et cetera? Um, and, and, uh, and some other issues like that. There's but. a lot of talk in the, in, in the industry about quantum computing and mm -hmm. creating you know, nightmares for guys like you. Um, how much thought have you given that? Do you have any things yeah. that you can share with us? Yeah, so there's, uh, there's work in the AWS crypto team uh, preparing for the post-quantum world. Mm -hmm. So imagine uh, adversary has quantum computer, and so there are proposals, uh, um, a, uh, AWS has a number of proposals, and we've, the, and those proposals have been implemented, so they're standards, and we've, our team has been doing uh, proof on the correctness of those. So actually in the, um, one of my talks, I think the, the, the talk not with Chad and uh, Tom, I show a demo of our um, work to prove the correctness of some post-quantum code, so. Cool. Byron, Byron yeah. thank you for coming on and sharing yeah, the insight. Congratulations on the automated reason. Good to see you put in the practice yeah, and yeah. appreciate Great. the commentary. Thank you very much. Thank you. Cube here for the first inaugural security, cloud security event, Reinforce, AWS is putting on this Cube coverage. I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante. Thanks for watching. Thank you.